here. Uh, testing one, two. There we got sound. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, I said something seems like it's off here because my my video seems like it's the frame counts down and now we got sound. <laughs> I was saying good morning. Good morning, December 10th, uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. Glad that you guys are here uh, for our daily devotions, but it is Saturday. And um, <clears throat> here is, uh, uh, I, I started to say, I put up this picture, which you saw, but you didn't hear what I was saying. Uh, you, uh, this is what it is like right now. Um, this was actually Monday, but um, nothing's changed since Monday. This is the intersection of... Um, uh, I can't, the County D and, and uh, High, Highway 51 coming out of Tomahawk, if I remember right. Bonnie took this on, on Monday after she picked up Zan, right? So this is this is 2022. Um, here's a year ago. <laughs> here's, here's where we were at a year ago for snow. This is, uh, this is Saturday night um, a year ago. <laughs> And, and uh, that was the first, uh, well, it wasn't the first snow, but it was the first serious snow we had gotten. <laughs> it was it was a, a year ago today um, in 2020, uh, 2021. So <laughs> I I just was looking at some pictures and I was amused, you know. Yeah, here we are now. That's what we were before. So, you know, you just never know what the, what the weather is going to be like. I was I was talking to somebody yesterday, and they said that uh, uh, in Michigan there, where some of you are, the snow really hadn't come down yet. Everything was green. It was raining. Um, you just don't know, you know. It's the weather's going to do. And right now we're under a weather alert for snow, but it's going to be like a dusting. Um, when Bonnie took the dog out this morning, she said that uh, um, she said it looked like there could be snow on the ground um, or it could just be a layer of thick frost it probably was a dusting of snow but it's it's winter you don't know what it's going to do so here we are on saturday morning for our daily devotions we've had our little laugh this morning and uh or at least i have um and and our technical problems so we'll uh We'll just see who's here and get down to business. Uh, let's see. I haven't got anywhere to go today. I have no priorities other than getting work done. So, uh, I mean, getting, I got it in sermons, and, but uh, yeah, two sermons because the different churches are getting different sermons this Sunday, different readings. For, uh, don't worry about it. It's my problem. Mushtak, good evening, my friend. Uh, and good morning on my end. Uh, Jerry, good morning. <clears throat> Squeak, yes. Cold is getting better, I think, by the way. Jerry, good morning. 35 over in Michigan. Yeah, see, see, we're sitting at, uh, well, we'll wait till we get to Bonnie's post because she'll put it up there. Geraldine and Neil, good morning. Well, to you guys. <clears throat> Deb and Ann and Grant, oh, Deb and Ann and Grant, good morning to you guys. Kathy, good morning. And there's Jerry with my no sound. Yeah, I I don't know what happened. I mean, the, the mic was switched back to default, and it wasn't on my, you know, I use a, this might make noise, but I use a, a little better quality mic uh, for my broadcast here than the one that's built into the into the camera or into my desktop. Um, I just, I, I think it's, I think it's a better sound. It doesn't sound as much like a tin can. You know, and the hard part is it, that was a $120 mic or something, but um i think it's better you know some guys would take a mic like this in this day and age and they'd put it up here and then they'd be talking like this the whole time and but i don't i don't think it needs to be up there and, um, it seems to work just fine right here next to my laptop uh yeah off on tangents well we're squirreling today i guess there's bonnie uh oh she didn't say the temp uh she's talking about rob my my grand my godson uh nick uh, Verna, good morning. Oh, there it is. 28. Cloudy, hazy, dampish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin. Wisconsin in the winter. Um, yeah, well, I, I thought, that's warmer than I thought we were. I thought we were colder than that, but I'll live with 28. All right. All right. All right. All right. I know. I know. I know. Let's get on with this. Uh, if you have Lutheran service, but oh, hey, hi to everybody else who's, you know, lurking in the background. I didn't do my tags this morning. I apologize to those who normally get tagged. I didn't, 
Oh, Bonnie tagged everything she said. Maybe we're getting multiple tags. I don't know. Um, good morning to everybody. Uh, whether you chimed in or you're watching in the background or uh, watching this later today, either here or on my YouTube channel, uh, hello, good morning, greetings, good day. Again, Saturday morning. If you, uh, you know, it's Saturday morning, don't have recycling to take. I don't have any appointments. I don't really have anything I have to do. My cold is getting a little better. I um, I switched my CPAP off from automatic climate control to a, uh, that's where I could control the humidity. And last, night before last, that worked okay. This last night I wound up with a buildup of water in there, so I was gurgling halfway through the night. But my sinuses are, are well moisturized, which I think has helped a little bit. Um, I'm still draining, don't, don't get me wrong. <laughs> But I, I woke up feeling better. Um, well, I woke up feeling like I hadn't had enough sleep, but I woke up feeling better than I have the last couple of days. So maybe we're maybe we're on the mend. Lutheran Service Book, if you have one, page 295, Daily Prayer for Individuals and Families, The Morning Order. That's where we uh, begin each day here. Well, we begin it with all this nonsense that I liked. Man, it is. It's, it's like it's like it's 20 frames a second instead of 24 or 30. Um, oh, well. It says it's 30 going out, but I, I don't know if the... Can't. My problem. All right. And so, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Uh, in our psalm today, our psalm is Psalm 86, somewhere here. Here we go, 86, 1 through 7. <clears throat> Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my life, for I am godly. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for to you do I cry all day long. Gladden the soul of your servant, for to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. Give ear, O Lord, to my prayer. Listen to my plea for grace. In the day of my trouble I call upon you, for you answer me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Incline your ear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. And when you hear that, you 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 should almost I at least I do um, think of uh, Matthew chapter five uh, when Jesus goes up upon the hill on the mount and opens his mouth and begins to teach. Blessed are the poor. Uh, I think I think in in Matthew it's blessed are the poor in in Luke it's blessed are the poor in spirit, um, <clears throat> for they uh, shall inherit the kingdom of heaven. And I am poor and needy. Um, we are. Right? I, a poor, miserable sinner. And so we call to God to preserve our life. And we claim to be godly. We are godly. We've been made godly by him. Right? Not, not by the things that we do or don't do or promise to do or forget to do but by the promise we received in our baptism and by the forgiveness of sins through which he continually resets our nature. Save your servant who trusts in you. You are my God. Um, and gladden the soul of your servant. For to you, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. And, you know, in this day and age, well, in all ages and all times and all places, um, joy is found in the Lord, right? Um, 
Jesus says, my peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Um, and joy and peace and contentment found in God, found in the promises of God fulfilled, um, found in the grace of Christ. It's not the, it's not the worldly joy um, that so many seek and so many point to and so many hope for. Um, but we are in, we, we have the joy of knowing uh, our salvation is sure in Christ. And so that whatever happens, you know, as Paul says, neither, uh, neither life nor death nor principalities, uh, rich nor poor, high nor low, life nor death, nothing can separate us from the love of the Lord in Christ Jesus. And that's the joy. That's the joy. The joy is in the day of my trouble, I call upon you for you answer me, right? Sometimes his answer is quiet. Sometimes his answer is, give it time. Sometimes his answer is, I'm taking my servant home. Sometimes his, his answer is healing. But no matter what, um, we are called to trust in him and in that trust, in that assurance that he is there and he hears us. There is a joy that surpasses all understanding. A joy that keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. I suppose we can go on to our next reading because, and, and maybe, you know, again, I don't, I don't read ahead, guys. Um, oh, look at that. The, something got something got shrunk down here. What happened? No, don't don't do that. You're supposed to. No, don't do that. There. What is going? Uh, all right, I'll have to fix that later. Something is just honker goofy here. Hmm. All right. Um. What was I saying? Oh. I don't read these things ahead. I mean, I've read the scriptures, but I let the I let what I'm reading move me. And and as I as I come to this, I was just talking about the joy we have in Christ Jesus and the peace that He's given us. I shouldn't move my hands like this. It looks goofy. Um. And in Isaiah, um, we read about the restoration of the new heavens and the, not the restoration, the 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 anticipation of the new heavens and the new earth, the peace and joy we have in that. And that's um, that's actually the heading for the section Isaiah, the, the heading in the ESV, you keep him in perfect peace. Um, I don't like the headings because sometimes they throw us a curveball, um, but that's the heading. And uh, so, but we're picking up in the middle here because we left off at verse 20 or at verse uh, 19. We're picking up at verse 20 of chapter 26 today. So 2620 through 2713. I'm going to lubricate here. <clears throat> hey, Ashley, good morning. <clears throat> okay. Mm, all right, here we go. 2620 and following. Come, my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourselves for a little while until the fury has passed by. For behold, the Lord is coming out from his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. And the earth will disclose, disclose the bloodshed on it and will no more cover its slain. And that day, the Lord with his hard and great and strong sword will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, Leviathan, the, the, the twisting serpent, and he will slay the dragon that is in the sea. In that day, a pleasant vineyard, sing of it. I, the Lord, am its keeper. Every moment I water it, lest anyone punish it. I keep it night and day. I have no wrath. Would that I had thorns and briars to battle. I would march against them. I would burn them up together or let them lay hold of my protection. Let them make peace with me. Let them make peace with me. In days to come, Jacob shall take root. Israel shall blossom and put forth shoots and, the, and fill the whole world with fruit. He has struck them as he struck those who struck. Oh, no, that was a question. Sorry. Has he struck them as he struck those who struck them? 
or have they been slain as their slayers were slain? Measure by measure, by exile, you contended with them. He removed them with fierce breath in the day of the east wind. Therefore, by this, the guilt of Jacob will be atoned for. And this will be the, the full fruit of the removal of his sin. When he makes all the stones of all of the altars, like chalk stones crushed to pieces, no ashram or incense altars will remain standing. For the fortified city is solitary, a habitation deserted and forsaken, like the wilderness. There the calf grazes. There it lies down and strips its branches. When its boughs are dry, they are broken. Women come and make a fire of them. For this is the people without discernment. Therefore, he who made them will not have compassion on them. He who formed them will show them no favor. In that day, from the river Euphrates to the brook of Egypt, the Lord will thresh out the grain, and you will be gleaned one by one, O people of Israel. And in that day, a great trumpet will be blown, and those who were lost in the land of Assyria, and those who were driven out to the land of Egypt, will come and worship the Lord on the holy mountain in Jerusalem. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, uh, hmm, yeah. As we finished up chapter 26, come my people into your chambers and shut your doors behind you until the fury has passed by. And I'm, I'm wondering if that's a twofold uh, idea. The Lord tells us in John's gospel, I go to prepare, I, um, I go to my father's house in which there are many dwelling places and I go to prepare a dwelling place for you and our dwelling place is in the Lord. Um, this mansion is Christ is Christ himself. Um, and, and so I'm wondering here, and I, I don't know, I'd have to, hey, Glenn, good morning. I'd have to, um, be interesting to see what St. Jerome says. Uh, are we, uh, the, these, the, uh, come my people, enter your chambers. Are these um, the places, and shut your doors behind you, are these the places um, that Christ makes for us after our death that are, our, uh, our soul, our spirit, goes to rest uh, until the time of the resurrection? Or is this uh, the resting place in the ground, the grave? I don't know. Regardless, he calls his people to go, go into a place that they can be safe while the fury of the Lord passes by, while his wrath is accomplished. Behold, the Lord is coming out of out from his place, heaven, to punish the inhabitants of earth for their iniquity, and the earth will disclose the blood shed on it and will no more cover its slain. That's judgment. I mean, it, there's no way around it there. Uh, the, the verses 21 and following there to the end of the end of the chapter are are, are God's judgment coming, God's wrath coming upon the world, right? Those those who have uh, caused suffering amongst the faithful will suffer for their suffering uh, in the same way that they suffered. Um, and then, ver cha then chapter 27 starts. And the, the heading on chapter 27 is the redemption of Israel. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm cautious. Um, because these headings sometimes throw us down a path. The headings, look, when you when you open your Bible and you read it, the headings, the verse numbers, the chapter numbers, these are not the inspired word of God. These are things that man has added for his own benefit. Um, you know, well, I, a few minutes ago, I was talking about the Sermon on the Mount, right? And so if you open to Matthew chapter five, you're going to find the Sermon on the Mount. Um, but the same sermon, the same idea Jesus speaks in Luke 
and it's the Sermon on the Plain. I, I, I believe that, that um, the message that Jesus spoke on the Mount in um, Galilee of the Gentiles in chapter 5 of Matthew and the sermon that he gives on the plain um, are not the same event. I, I think as, as Jesus traveled during the three years of his life, he said some of the same things over and over and over and over. Different groups of people needing to hear the same thing, right? We all need to hear the promise of the gospel. And that's what that's what the Beatitudes and everything that comes after it, that's what the Sermon on the Plain is, is uh, the promise of the gospel for those who, those who are poor, uh, but by Christ and in Christ inherit the kingdom of heaven. Uh, those who, were, who are poor, who are made rich by Christ. So um, the headings don't always help us. So, but when 27 starts, the Lord in that day, which that's why I say it's judgment, right? Um, in that day, the Lord, it's a, the great and awesome day, I would say in the New Testament. In that day, the Lord with his hard and great, hard, great and strong sword. That's a, that's a sword that cannot be broken, avoided or uh, parried or dodged. Will punish Leviathan, the fleeing serpent, right? It's, a, it's the old wicked foe. The twisting serpent who will slay the dragon that is in the sea. And if we if we go to Revelation, we can read about John's vision given by Christ of the slaying of the dragon. So that's that's the final defeat of Satan, right? He's defeated at the cross. He's he's bound at the cross, right? Um, but his his wickedness and evil in the world has not stopped. Though though he is bound, his servants continue. Um, to carry out his will. Um, they can't really do anything. All they can do is whisper in our ear a maneuver. Uh, uh, they can't affect us directly, especially not the faithful. Yes, we can talk about demonic possession and things like that. And those are very real things, my friends. Don't, don't think that's something that Hollywood has. Um, a friend of mine, um, uh, Bob, um, hmm? yes, very much scariness. Bob, uh, Bob, Ooh, what's his name? Bob, uh, Bob Bennett. Bob Bennett has written uh, a couple of books on his experiences with uh, 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 his experiences with the uh, with the demonic and demonic possession. Um, He's currently the now the executive director of Luther Academy at, at, at Fort Wayne, but, but he wrote this one, Afraid, and then uh, he has the, the follow-up with this. This is Demon Possession and Spiritual Warfare in America. His follow-up book is called I Am Not Afraid, right, which is what we have in Christ. This is the realization that, that the demonic is very true and Satan is, is out there. The other one is that we're in Christ. So um, the dragon slain. In that day, a pleasant vineyard, sing of it. See, so so even as, as those things are happening, as the destruction and judgment's coming, in that day, a pleasant vineyard. Right? What's a vineyard? Well, the vineyard that Jesus talks about is the world which we are in. This is his vineyard, right? And in that day, a pleasant vineyard, sing of it, the Garden of Eden, the paradise. I am the Lord and its keeper, and every moment I water it, lest anyone punish it. I keep it night and day. I have no wrath. Would that I had thorns and briars to battle, because that's the way the world used to be, but in the new heavens and the new earth, no briars, no thorns. I'd march up against them. I'd burn them all together. I'd let them lay hold of my protection. Ah, you would redeem them. Or I would let them lay hold of my protection and let them make peace with me. And then he says, the, the, the psalmist here, Isaiah repeats, let them make peace with me. Right? Not the Lord will change to meet man's needs, but the Lord is as he is and continues eternally as he is. We are the ones who change and he changes us through the blood of Christ. Through the gift of the Holy Spirit, through the waters of baptism, through the word and the sacrament, he changes us 
so that we have peace with him. And then Israel takes root, Jacob shall take root, blossoming, filling the whole world. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it, this is this is the new heaven, the new earth. This is the, um, what was is crushed and gone and, and removed. Um, <laughs> uh, the people without discernment, the people without discernment, Therefore, he who made them will not have compassion on them, right? The creator, God. He who formed them will show them no favor. Those without discernment. Remember, it's St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 11. He who takes the body and blood of Christ without properly discerning it does so to his own condemnation. I don't remember if the words condemnation or judgment, but the, we, we wind up in the same place. Know the Lord and fear him. And in fearing the Lord, know him and love him. In that day, the river Euphrates, the brook of Egypt, the Lord will thresh out the grain and you'll be gleaned one by one, O people of Israel. Yeah, the angels are the reapers and the gleaners. And they will cut down the wheat on the threshing floor, the grain will be separated from the straw and the chaff. The straw, straw and the chaff will be burned when the fires that burn without end, and the grain will be taken into his granary, which is heaven, the new heavens and the new earth. And a great trumpet will be blown, which is, he will come with the, with the sound of the trumpet, the voice of an archangel the cry of an archangel. Those who were lost in the land of Assyria, those who were driven out to the land of Egypt will come from the east and the west to worship the Lord on the holy mountain of Jerusalem. Those who remain faithful to him by the works that he does for them, in them, they in him, uh, they are saved. They will worship in the true place of worship in the presence of God in those days that follow the last day. Hmm. Amen. Let's look to our prayer of the day. O God of love, those who abide in love abide in you, and you abide in them. Give us such perfect love of you and our neighbor that all fear may be cast out of our hearts, and that we may with confidence greet you on the day of judgment. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And we are bold to pray, as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And for ourselves and others on this Saturday morning in December, Victorious Lord, risen Christ, the temptation and allures the devil, the world, and my own sinful nature are many. Without you, they are too much. Abide with me. Help me fight against the evils that surround me today. Do not let me overcome, be overcome by them. Let me stand firmly under the banner of your cross, confidently knowing and firmly believing that I have victory in you over sin and every evil. Seek and save all who have been overcome by the temptations, allures, and assaults of these powerful enemies. 
Restore those who are lost and have fallen away from the faith. Strengthen everyone whose faith is wavering. Hold them in your hands and fold them with your love. Remind them that you have not abandoned them. Help them to see that despite what they are going through, in fact, for that very reason, you died on the cross and rose from the dead to give them the victory. As this day begins, cause me to remember all that you are and that you are with me and that I have nothing to fear. Allow my work to be productive and beneficial. Keep my lips and my life free from evil and my eyes firmly fixed on your cross. Let me depend on you. You are my strength. You are my help. You are my life. You are my salvation. And by your good and gracious will, I trust that you will lead and guide me this day. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray also for those who have asked for our prayers, whose bodies or spirits are waning or suffering in this world, even as we uh, seek that peace that you've given us, as we seek your face. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers, Pat, Lois, Anne, Rianne, Rose, Bob, Mike, Megan, Ezra, Deanna, and for the family of Andy, the health care worker who passed. May you, Lord, be their eternal light, their Savior, their promise, their strength in suffering, reminding them always of the grace that they have in you, and that only in and through you do they have that peace. Help us to be the same Lord, seeking that peace in Jesus and in his name. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, my friends, Saturday morning devotion. Check. Live your lives in Christ on this day. Go to church tomorrow and receive his, receive his gifts of grace and mercy to strengthen you from now into life everlasting. God's peace be with you, and we will see you back here Monday morning. God's peace.